how easily we see the defects in others, how difficult it is to see our own, how readily we accuse others, how willingly we excuse ourselves, how slowly we acknowledge our own failures, even when a good friend points them out to us in the hope that we might improve. We are like the boy who failed his maths exam. This is unacceptable, said his father. It deserves severe punishment. I know, I know, said the boy. I agree, and I know where the teacher lives. There's nothing constructive about turning into a professional critic. If God had turned into, into an art critic after human beings uh, spoilt the work of creation, there would have been no incarnation, no Christmas, no healing grace for us, no church, no incorporation into Christ, the new man, the new Adam, no empowerment to make the world what it ought to be, to put the finishing touches to the, the canvas that God provided us with. Hmm, wonderful possibilities we have for living a fulfilled life. But we prefer to exercise our critical minds, not on ourselves, but on the system or everything other than looking at our, ourselves. 9-11 is a great reminder that the world needs healing. So is cancel culture and Marxist critical theory, which flourishes in universities. There's nothing constructive or creative about these fashionable trends in thought. It's about smashing things down and starting again and certainly wants to cancel Christ, that's for sure. Reform is good, but it needs to start with oneself. Martin Luther didn't understand that. If we try to correct our own defects, we will be more patient and more merciful with others. But we are often blind to our own defects. St. Augustine says that we see in others, writ large, the problems that we ourselves have, but we don't see it in ourselves. We are strange creatures who needs evidence of original sin something went badly wrong we need help we need God we need the church <clears throat> not just some private religion or religiosity there's a story about an arts professor with a keen critical eye he took his students to the art gallery and he criticised all the portraits. He really got carried away. Finally, he stopped in front of what he thought was a full-length portrait. What a ridiculous lanky fellow, big nose, small head, shabby clothes, no taste. A student interrupted him. Professor, that is not a portrait. You're standing in front of a mirror. 